Today, I'm gonna to talk about the shoe that I'm gonna bring for the FKT attempt on the Heritage Trail in Iowa. Five point three seven miles, nine minutes, sixteen seconds per mile, one hundred and twenty-seven beats per minute, taking it nice and slow. Part of a taper that I'm going into right now for the FKT attempt along the Heritage Trail in Iowa that I'm going to do this week. Uh, so the the taper, the uh, quote unquote taper that I'm going to do is uh, on Tuesday. I'm going to go for a shorter run. That's the footage that you saw. Wednesday will be a complete rest day. And then Thursday, that's when I'll be going for it. I'm going to run the Heritage Trail from one end to the other, the entire length. Uh, I've run, I think, over almost all of the trail before at some point, just never all at once. So this is something I'm pretty excited to do. It's something I've been wanting to try for a couple of years now. Never really had the opportunity, usually because right around this time of the year, I'm training for a marathon. So it doesn't really always fit into a marathon training block this year without a marathon to train for, perfect time. So one thing that I'm thinking about though is like my biggest concern is the shoe that I'm gonna bring. Now for this FKT attempt, about 25 miles of it are gonna be on crushed gravel. And so it's gonna be a dirt road type of surface. And so that kind of throws things off. I'm a, more of a road runner. That's the shoes that I understand a little bit better. I'm not a trail runner. Uh, I run on trails, but I don't consider myself like a trail runner, so to speak. So uh, I've been trying to look at it from a couple of different perspectives. I took the Ultra Superiors out for a run today to see if I would like that. And I think I would, but just for something that's that long and that I wanna try to run a little bit faster on, I'm not sure that that's gonna be the shoe that's gonna give me that pop that I'm looking for uh, at some of those harder efforts. So here are the four shoes that I'm looking at now. I'm looking at the Endorphin Speed, the Hyperion Tempo, the Adazero Pro, and the Fuel Cell TC. So quite a, a range of shoes. All these shoes I would consider like speed shoes or marathon racers. And they each have kind of their strengths and weaknesses. So uh, I guess I'll just go through them all so that way we can kind of talk about what I'm thinking uh, as I go through the, each of the shoes. So uh, the first one that I'm considering is the Endorphin Speed. This is a shoe that is probably uh, one of my favorite shoes for the entire year. It's got uh, Saucony's Power Run PB formulation in the midsole, which is nice and bouncy. It's a little bit of a heavy shoe for a racer, but still overall lightweight. There's a nylon plate in here, not a carbon fiber plate, but I think for like my weight and my speed, I think that that plate is the right level of rigidity for me. So this is gonna be a really good option. I ran on part of the Heritage Trail with this shoe before as part of a test. And I found that on the crushed gravel, which it's gonna be 25 miles of crushed gravel for this run, I don't quite feel the pop in the, the plate that's in this shoe. So it's, a little bit underwhelming uh, in that regard. And so I was thinking maybe I should look for something a little bit faster. The next shoe that I'm looking at is the Hyperion Tempo. I just really like the DNA Flash midsole foam that's in here. In the forefoot, it feels nice and springy. And even in the heel, even though it's a bit firm, I think for something where I'm gonna be running slower than my marathon pace, cause it's a 29.3 mile run, uh, I think that this is gonna be the right amount of comfort still as I'm getting tired towards the end and maybe I'm getting a little sloppy using more of this part of the shoe than I am this part of the shoe. So I thought this might be nice. It's a lightweight shoe. I really enjoy it, very comfortable. I thought this might be a good option as well. I don't like it so much when I'm running on rocks, but the Heritage Trail, it's much more buffed out uh, in terms of like 
to the extent that there are rocks, they're much finer. Uh, it's also a little bit of a softer material as well. So I thought this might be uh, a good choice for that because I'm not gonna have to worry about like real sharp rocks. The next shoe that I was thinking about is something that's a little bit on the faster range, keeping in mind that the surface is a little bit softer and there aren't a lot of large rocks that I'd have to worry about. And that's the Zero Pro. On the road, this is not my favorite shoe. I just feel like there's not enough to take it for even the marathon distance. Not that 29 miles is that much longer than 26, but for a marathon racer, I don't think this is gonna work for me just cause there's not enough in the forefoot to kind of protect my feet. I just feel like I'm gonna be real beat up by the time I get to like mile 20. So that's a feeling that I'm hoping to avoid. But because that surface on the Heritage Trail is gonna be a little bit softer, I thought this might be a good option because I'd also been considering the Boston 9. I've been running with the Boston 9 both as a speed day shoe, but also as a daily trainer around here where again, I'm running on roads and dirt roads. And it's actually been working out really well with the exception has the same problem as the Hyperion Tempo of those bigger rocks tend to get really uncomfortable underfoot. I thought this could be kind of like the Boston 9, but give me something a little bit extra that I'm looking for. There's a lot more boost in the heel than there is in the Boston 9. So I thought this could be a good option too. Going the exact opposite end of like the cushioning spectrum is the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. This is a super tall shoe and a super squishy shoe as well, but it's got a full length carbon fiber plate in here. With all this foam and with that plate, it is a little bit of a heavier shoe, but again, it's a 29 mile race. I'm looking to run uh, kind of like basically moderate effort the entire time. And I thought this might be a really good contender. Uh, there's not a lot of traction on the outsole of this shoe. It's a little bit of concern with the crushed gravel surfaces that I'm gonna be running on. And it is a little bit tall, but there aren't going to be very many turns at all. Uh, and to the extent that there are, they're all gonna be very gradual. The Heritage Trail used to be an old rail line that was converted into a recreational trail, but because trains used to have to go on it, freight trains, all the curves, all the inclines are very nice and smooth. I felt like this could also be a good choice. So uh, then there's a lots of other shoes that I have kind of at my disposal. I, I'm very lucky in terms of the options that I have, but those are the four that I've been narrowing it down to. And I, I'm still not entirely sure that Zero Pro is very tempting. I think it's kind of like the riskier choice for me because I feel like there isn't as much, as much cushioning in it. And the same thing with the Hyperion Tempo is just not like cushioning isn't like its forte. That being said, that DNA flash foam is unique. So the fact that it isn't as tall as the other shoes doesn't necessarily mean that it's less cushioned. But I think ultimately the one that strikes the best balance between something that's going to go fast, but something that's also going to provide a lot of that cushioning that I'm looking for is the Endorphin Speed. It might not be quite as exciting on the crushed gravel surfaces, but it's not gonna be bad at any of those surfaces. It's gonna do really well. I've done some test runs on that exact surface. I enjoyed it. Uh, and the first mile and the last, I think about four miles of the run are gonna be on pavement. And so that's gonna be a really great time to have, feel like a little bit of a bump coming from that nylon plate that's in here. So. I think overall, this is the one that's gonna do it for me. The upper here is nice and breathable, very comfortable, but not too padded. Plenty of stack height to absorb the impact of all those miles. I think this one's gonna be it. Yeah, I'm gonna have a, another video planned in terms of all the other gear uh, and gels and fuel, all that stuff, all that strategy, I'll talk about in tomorrow's video, but the run will actually be tomorrow and then the following day after that, the day after, that's when I'll have the video of the actual run and the FKT attempt itself. I'm the only one that's ever done it. No one's ever done it. So um, I'll be the first one. So as long as I complete the run, I'll get that FKT, but I'm hoping to put in a good time. I'll talk about that more in tomorrow's video. So stay tuned for that one. If you have any questions about the choices that I've made for today, or if you just think I'm completely wrong, let me know in the comments. For me, shoes and a race are always like a game time decision. I'll probably end up bringing a couple of pairs with me in the car and just decide like at the last minute, which one am I gonna put on? So thanks everybody for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?